just in the conventional sense. What's up, y'all? Welcome back. It's your boy, Colo. And it's your boy, Young Toledo. And you're watching Kill the Poet Season 2, Episode 4. Uh, who do we got on the podcast today, Colo? Yo, we got our homie, Jay. He performed his poem, Party in Carson, for us. And uh, I'm pretty sure he just came out with a book, too, Lessons on Repeat. Check That's it right. out. Uh, you want to take a listen to the poem? Let's go. Let's do it. Party in Carson. I guess what I was wearing was too loud. Pops made me change. Quiet up my attire. Not quite business casual, but neutral. I look respectable. Shit. I wanted to look my age. Before you leave, make sure you call your grandma. She was asking about you. She said, baby. I ain't had time for that. Daddy and Drew pulled up in a two-door bucket. I nicknamed Peaches. Had to climb through the window. I guess the door will get fixed when our attitudes do. We had the cassette tape with the art score. You got to hold it right or it won't play. Blasting. Bitch, don't kill my vibe. See, Mom Dukes knew the only way we was going to put gas in Peaches. If it was already on E, put 10 on 5, gossip snacks, gave a homeless man with lingering eyes all the change we had left. We needed all the good karma we could get. A group of sharks pulled up. They could smell blood. They wore the colors of sadness. They would shoot at the moon if it was bloody. He said, hey, cuz. No, we weren't related. I froze like the such puppy I was holding. Hey, you got a lighter? <laughs> nah. His homie say, nigga, I just gave you my lighter. Why you asking him? Usually, I shake the gas pump to get her. All our money's worth, this time I let the gas drip in my shoe. As I wiggle the gas cap closed, the bros asked, what was that about? I said, shit, nothing we on. Pull up to the scene. I'm yelling out the window because I saw a girl from Dominguez. She had a name that twisted your tongue like earphones in your pocket. So instead, I said, hey, gorgeous. The bros said, can you get out the car with your loud ass? You ain't cracking nothing but your phone tonight. We get to the party. It's just as peaceful as the neighborhood. They say, beware of sirens. Well, all I see is angels on this odyssey. The women were throwing it back, and we was grabbing everything we can fit into our hands. Say Yes came on. The lights got low. I was looking for a wife for the night. I saw a gorgeous from earlier. Untangled her name with my tongue. Spoke louder than music, but soft enough not to ruin the song. Pulled her close, wanted her to feel me more than she felt the music. She smelled like the things that made cavities, and I needed my feel. The mood was where it needed to be until niggas walked in with the shenanigans. They was yelling, where y'all from? All I heard was, so whoop. I proceeded out the side. Met up with Day at the end of the alley. Concern didn't cross our mind. Youth made us bulletproof. We was just like the Justice League, faster than a speeding bullet and disappear in the night like Batman. The last time this happened, Drew walked into the car smiling. That time he came back as a man. This time he'll come back as an angel. We started calling his name, hoping God wasn't calling it too. Too many missed calls me. Somebody got an answer for one. We went around the world that night trying to rewind time. I guess that shit only works for Superman. Three of us went to the party, only two of us came back. Maybe if the colors he wore were more muted like mine, they wouldn't have silenced him. Maybe if we gave the homeless man more change, it would change the outcome of that night. Maybe if I called my granny back, her prayers would have worked. See, me and Drew talked about other stuff because I didn't like sports, so I knew he knew of God. But that night, he'll meet him. This one. All right, man. So, Jay, thank you so much for. <laughs> thank you so much for coming on to the show. Fuck with y'all. My guy. <laughs> yeah, like, I mean, I. We know where this is going. <laughs> we, uh, we already know where this is going. So, I must ask you when you are writing any of your pieces, what is your process when it comes to those, right? Process. A couple things, couple things. So I might start with a line, and that line might be fire as fuck. I'm like, where is this gonna go? Probably nowhere. So then I scratch the fucking line, cause I'm like, I'm gonna say this shit for later. I got a whole line folder. It's like it's a bunch of fire emojis and shit. One liners. Yeah, a bunch of Damn. fire emojis. You don't got that? No. It's like, oh, this is where all my cool shit that don't make it to nowhere is just be there. You mind if I steal that idea? No, hell yeah, go ahead. Right, so it's like whenever you want to feel good about your writing ability, you go to the line folder. Like, oh, wow, this shit don't go nowhere, so hell yeah. but it sound cool as shit. Hell yeah. Just a bunch of metaphors. I'm like, oh shit. Yeah, I yeah, can't yeah. compare you to my broken down car. Because wow. you're reliable and shit. Mm. Mm. <laughs> and then when I really That's need fine. you, you fuck up. You're starting off right. That's fine. That's fire. Um, <laughs> and That's I mean, and to that point, like I... The fact that you even have a, a folder for the one-liners, I mean, when it comes to Party and Carson, right, you're, you're talking about, like, going to Party and Carson when 
things start to go left and I mean initially right, you know. Oh, yeah. yeah. So how 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 are you like with those metaphors that you have were some of those lines that were in your that are in your flame emoji folder did they find their way into that poem i think a few did a few did, <laughs> a few did. like okay. one or two i think the thing about the sharks made it in there mm-hmm. and then it was something about uh the first couple of lines about changing my attire okay. so that so, was in there so when you're dealing with real life like that right how do you translate them into fire emoji lines you know metaphors for sure really? it's like uh, breaking down uh the normal like what you're used to and then uh saying it in a way in which you never thought about it so it's like the first couple of lines is like pops made me change quiet up my attire not quite business casual but neutral i look respectable i wanted to look my age so that's just about um not being able to wear the colors that you want to wear but knowing where you live you can't wear those colors so it's like you don't have to look like you're going out for an interview, but you can't look like you're the coolest motherfucker in the world either, because cool people attract attention, and attention is usually loud. So you gotta quiet your attire. So you gotta quiet the way you look until something that's uh, you know, less yeah, obvious. Depending on where you like live or where you grow up or you come out, come come up from, you know, exactly. um, certain energy, certain attention, certain attire can definitely attract. A specific kind of attention. Is the poem kind of like a, a a mix match of several stories, like from yourself or like friends? Yeah. Like in terms of like the inspiration for where it came from, or is like? No, it's definitely like a mix and match. It's like uh, I I I remember exact stories, and I was like, oh, I can't wear that today. I was like, my dad was like, what are you wearing that for? And I was like, oh shit, I'm wearing red, huh? This is my only red shirt. He's like, I don't fuck with that. And I was like, you right? I don't, I don't fuck with that either. So I'm like, oh, I'm wearing blue today. Well, I'm wearing like gray or something that's black that no one really cares yeah. about. It's like you wear something that like, you know, yeah. that won't, won't nobody look at you twice. Yeah, 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 just so you can kind of blend in. So yeah, I was like kind of like born to be chill and shit. It was like, nah, you're not gonna be the coolest motherfucker in the world. You wanna, you wanna look like somebody can look past you and be like, all right, unless you get to know him, Man. then you get to know him. That's that's crazy. And what what's what I, what I find super interesting about that is that um, I feel like whether you're in high school or even at a workplace where you're grown or whatever um i feel like we all have to work through this uh thing where we're trying to and i i don't think in your situation it's necessarily this um but like to impress or like please other people but i feel like the flip side of that coin is not really to impress or please people but to like blend into those people and whether you're say you're an immigrant or something you know you're you're coming from a different country or you're in a place that you know that you're not a part i mean based off of what you're saying i'm I'm assuming that it's not like the blending in that you're trying to do wasn't because you were trying to get involved in it you were just trying to make sure you didn't get into any trouble type thing right yeah it's kind of like uh I guess all the lessons you don't realize you learn. And I was like, oh, let me write some of these things down. So it's like, uh, you know the lesson, like, uh, when you're about to get pulled over. Yeah. It's like, look forward. You already know the, the feel. You know the vibe. Yeah. Everybody just start, like, getting a little stiff. Yeah. You see hands start raising, so they're going towards dashboards. I'm like, oh, yeah, we is all black. Let's go ahead. And just <laughs> yeah. Oh, yep. <laughs> Calm your heart rate down. You try to do things that you know you can't do. It's like, oh, let me make my hands not sweat. That shit don't work. Wow. How you make your hands not sweat? Because I remember getting pulled over once with my dad, and I was like, 13 and he was it was like i was like he was like why are your hands sweaty like, <laughs> <laughs> you're like so, uh, that's a great yo. question <laughs> my jeans <laughs> my dad my dad got sweaty oh that's bad <laughs> fuck i'm talking too fast so, yo it's my, crazy so one thing i get from my dad right is when we're stressed out <clears throat> in certain situations you, like we get sweaty Right. And in, and especially in situations where you should not be sweaty. Right. I, I remember we <laughs> uh, I forgot which country we were in, but like flex. Yeah, subtle. <laughs> anyway, I'll be trying to figure out what Walmart I was in. He was like, what country was I in? I said, what the fuck? What the Man, been anywhere. Anyway, uh, so I, I think it was 
I want to say Germany or something, but there was something that we were taking back from Nigeria, and it they, they I don't know what it was, but the fact that there was a commotion about our bags because I mean if you travel enough like it's just like well, there shouldn't be any commotion, but there was like security like hey, what you know multiple people coming in, yeah. and then like they had to take my dad and it was like hey we need to talk to you already at this point because something is different and there's something going on with our journey he's sweating so bad <laughs> right <laughs> so if you're a security person right Damn. especially in like germany or some shit you see a an african looking man sweating because we found something in their bag and it's just like oh perfect <laughs> not knowing that like he just when he gets stressed, you know, he gets sweat he gets sweaty. And how this hit me is I remember I was running late for work one time. And I and this was like fifteen minutes like, late. I feel like you're actually running late for work. No, 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 yeah, no, yeah. <laughs> you know, ridiculous. But like it was a whole theory on that. <laughs> it was fifteen minutes late. I come in and I clock in and my boss is looking at me and this was a very cool day. It was a beautiful day. I was just drenched. And she asked me, like, yo, are you, are you okay? Like, are you, yeah, <laughs> you know, it's like, are you, like, is everything all right? I was like, oh, everything is all right. It's just, I'm 15, I was late as fuck today. I was very late today. Sorry, mom. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, no, it's, it's, it's just like things like that. And especially if those are your physiological just things. You know, you get pulled over by the police and you're having a physiological thing that anybody could have, you know. Mm. It's just those things that it's you excuses forget. for them to fuck with you. Yeah, mess no. with you. Those those things that you forget <laughs> and you don't realize that you're learning. No, exactly. Uh, it's just I have a motto on being late. If you're gonna be late, you might as well walk. <laughs> I mean you're already late, you might as well not be late and hot. So I ain't gonna lie. That was my motto throughout like college. Uh -huh. And I was like, Fuck what? 30? Uh-huh. Man, walking. So, so walking. You, you you mentioned, so what did you go to school for? Like, if Illustration. So I went to school to draw. Mm. Now, right, poetry? I do both. <laughs> nice. I went to school for what your parents tell you not to go to school for. It's like, don't, don't be like Jay. Damn. You know, RC and shit. Damn. You know, got they're his own to tell clothing you and books and shit. You know, tried, that. Did your parents ever tell it, like, try to tell you that there's, like, illustration and no money in arts oh no nah, like i hear that from other people my parents were like Word. oh you're the only person who went to college cool okay like, cool Hell yeah. Oh, yeah. the only one Dumb. i mean i could fuck this shit up yeah yeah yeah. so it's just the fact that you're you're even going yeah they're like you made it i say yeah mm -hmm, mm -hmm. it's kind of cool that's very fire for us yeah. so um how did you land on illustration oh it was the only major i couldn't really cheat in so I was like, fuck. I was like, so, you know, your GE classes, you can use Quizlet. And you drawing, you can trace the shit, but you still got to trace it well. So it's like you're cheating, but you still, like, if you're going to trace some shit, you might as well draw your own shit. And it's like, I'm going to draw my own shit, I might as well draw something I like. And I'm like, all right, I can't cheat in this. And I can't do, like, a last minute drawing, because they're going to be like, oh, I can see that. You only took two hours to make that. This was a three-week project. You got an F. Wow. It's like, how you know that? She was like, it's in the lines. I said, fuck, I should have erased all this shit then. Damn. That's, that's Did you cool. like, so you like really doubled down on the fact that you had to get the shit right? Yeah, I still did yeah. it wrong though. Mm. I got a D in art. <laughs> I, got D, I got a D in my great. major. So, <laughs> I, got, so, I mean, illustration yeah. two, I got a D in it. So what, was it just like they told you to do something specific and you weren't feeling it? I was just being dumb. <laughs> <laughs> okay. No, I thought I could take a Saturday class. Mind you, okay, right, right, right. our classes are long as hell. So this one Saturday class was from uh, 9 a.m. to 3.30. Yeah, our classes are long for no yes, reason. Yes, yes. A job, right? <laughs> and, and it was on a Saturday. So I could be making so money like, right now, but I'm I could miss here. a Saturday or two. Or four. So I missed four Saturdays. And so they're two classes each. So that's eight classes. <laughs> it was like, Jay, why are you coming? I said, I, I said, I'm still in rows. She was like, Why are you 
it, technically, you know, I was like, I was like, dang, you making me feel bad. It was like, how? You're not here. It was like, okay. ah, so you make a lot of sense. You're taking these art classes, I took right? It seriously eventually. You, you took, <laughs> yeah, you, you took it seriously. And I'm assuming that's what you got your degree in, right? Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, you're doing art, and I, just for the people at home, like, uh, the, what you're wearing, right? Oh, yeah. So, clothes. You feel me? Yeah, if it closed, Whoa. get you a windbreaker. So, yeah. So, I take a lot of, like, art projects I had in yeah. class, and I just put put it on clothes. Mm -hmm. And I was like, yeah. Because you making me do all this work for no money. Like, I'm literally paying you to do a lot of work. I need to make this back. So, that was, like, my first thought in school. I was like, how can I make my time back with some money? You know, so, capitalism, that bullshit. So yeah, like, oh, yeah. Let, me, yeah. let me capitalize on you capitalizing on me. Wow. And I was like, all right. Yeah, yeah. I was like, I'm going to use all y'all to critique all my art so I can know it's good. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to take it to the world because I already know it's good because a bunch of artists say it was dope. So I'm like, all right, cool. I'm so going to sell it. You're you're doing all that, and it sounds like you're putting a lot of time into it, right? So then when it comes back to your poem, right, how – when where did you find the time to even be channeling all the artistic and – emotions and feelings that you put into your graphic art like where did you why did you find the time to even go into writing something like an experience like that you know i think it's because like i struggled with illustrating it which is like that's my major i was like mm -hmm. i'm struggling with making this look like what i wanted to sound like or i wanted to like look like i'm like whoa hmm. why am i missing the ball like I can say it and I can tell you it make a lot of sense but I draw it and it looks boring or it looks cliche or I just I wrote exactly what I saw yeah. and I'm like I can make this sound a lot better than I can make it look yeah. and though in, in doing that I can create metaphors and then I can use those metaphors to make a cool looking piece of art Yeah. so I'm like wow. kind of made them like a marriage mm -hmm. and I'm like alright I can, I can do both of these things and kind of bounce back and forth and these creative things can like latch on to each other right you felt like one thing was kind of like a, a form of inspiration for another thing exactly. in a way that's awesome yeah have you ever thought about um bridging them together in a different kind of way like having like a i don't know like a hybrid of of both the the Ill, like the words that you're speaking like the po poetic shit and like like almost like a movie format like of like evolving it into like a um like a video format that you know what i'm saying fly. i i feel like it's, there's certain shit that i really fuck with where it's like music videos or like certain shit where it's like there's a poetic aspect with the video and it's like and and it all ties in together like and it's so i'm so amazing. going to take this time to plug the kill the poets patreon right <laughs> that content such as that you know might be on there you see this tapestry uh young dronawanga on the red bubble we'll put that in the link because what i just said kind of didn't make any sense make that but, bread <laughs> um yeah it's i mean things like that like i uh, essentially a poetry music video Sounds lit, right? Or am I, you know, what I'm saying. Well, hey, y'all make music, kill, kill you make Patreon. poetry, and I think like it might be on a Patreon. It's, it's like it's like peanut butter and jelly, bro. Like, <laughs> it just makes sense. It just makes. Sense. I mean, do you put your peanut butter on one side, or are you like one of those mixy people? The answer is yes. What? Oh, <laughs> no. what are you talking about, bro? <laughs> The answer is yes. <laughs> I do it all ways, bro. Left, I'm right, sorry. and back. <laughs> yeah. But all if you right. get it in like the little all in one shit, I ain't gonna cap. I love the all in one shit. The, the smuck, the dude, dude. Like I know people hate it, but I feel I like a lot of people. It. I feel like a lot of people hate it, but the ratio I know. Is up for me. I know when I was younger. Was it too much of? Too much peanut butter. I don't know though. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. That's just me. Especially really with the, the mix, like the mix of the jelly and the. I feel like, I feel like they <laughs> did like math on it. 
Like, since it's in the same jar with the jelly, it does a little little tangle little thing, and it make the peanut butter taste this is better. An unpopular no, like, opinion, for sure. But that's like, unpopular. I thought it was like. I know. I feel like a lot of people, people don't, don't like fuck it. with the mixed no, jars. They don't. The but. Good. Thank, Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Dear the odd man out. I'm sorry. I guess so, bro. There you go. Hey, I, I mean, I don't fuck with people like that. So first, I'm definitely out. Like hey, hey, separate but equal. Hey. Separate but equal. Hey. 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 <laughs> Bro, you know what the, the, the Republicans are gonna take a clip of this video and be like, you see? <laughs> you see what we're talking dude. They're talking about peanut butter and jelly. Doesn't it not make sense, you know? What? <laughs> and who was who? Yeah. Obviously we're the jelly. <laughs> Obviously. Obviously. No, but, but the, the, the yeah, I, I talking about that. Oh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> we, we get into that. I'm so sorry. Okay, so one thing I have to ask you is like, what do you read? Do you, do you read a, a, like a certain kind of poet, like a certain brand of poet to uh, gain inspiration for what you're writing? I think I do a mix. I definitely read some poetry. So like Rudy Francisco. Oh, yeah. And I definitely watch some poets. Mm-hmm. Uh, I listen to a lot of music. So big K Dot fan. That's all poetry, you know, rhythm and poetry. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So, like, once you blend all that together and you have, like, a, a beautiful palette of things to pull from, mm-hmm. you just want to create something in which, like, you could just sit there and just love by yourself. So as soon as you can love something by yourself, that's you. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, I want my poetry to be loved by me, and then I guess y'all can have it. I know that sounds selfish, but, like, it's mine. Mm. Well, with that... I think we're gonna take a quick break. Be right back. Come poet. are back uh welcome back to <laughs> kill the poet um so i i can't even tell you what we were talking about before the break i i just can't yeah, right, it, it's <laughs> it, it is gone and it has disappeared in the ether and we just have to be okay with that <laughs> um so i guess i have to ask you so with partying carson right mm-hmm. um i know I, I've asked this before, and I feel like with different people, there's always different answers. But with a piece like that, where you're telling stories, does where you're writing it really matter? Like, as in either, you know, where you're sitting or like where you're actually physically writing a poem like that? I wrote this in a terrible place and not my mind, but I wrote it while driving. Oh, damn. damn. Yeah, this is, one, this is one of those times. But like, it was like it was like safe bad driving. Um, it, no, or is this worse? I'm gonna say it out loud, and y'all tell me how bad it is. So I was driving on campus. Oh. So you know you gotta drive kind of slow on campus, but I guess I should have been watching out for pedestrians even more. Mm-hmm. But you know, you in college, you should know when somebody's not paying attention yeah. while driving. This is true. Sounds terrible. True. But yeah, so I was I was like, I was driving up campus, okay. and I was like, oh shit, it sounds cool. I, and you just needed to yeah and i was like get it down i was like oh this is this is, this is good it's going somewhere mm-hmm. it's going somewhere what, what was the first line you started and it did it sounded bad by the way no i'm kidding <laughs> 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 no, was, was, i'm like what the fuck was the first line <laughs> um but what, what was the first line that like oh, came so to you I, th- I think it was less of a line more like a concept mm. it was like i want to talk about karma and then i want to talk about uh i want to talk about bloods and crips but in like a different kind of way I was like I want to kind of put all this together and then I wanted to last like a day like a like a like a simple from A to B story yeah did you like, want someone to like learn from something from it or were you not thinking about that as as early I don't think I was thinking about that as much I was well I wouldn't say learn but I want you to get like a, a idea of how I think more so like I was thinking about karma and I was like how quickly 
does karma work mm -hmm. and does it work the way you think it works mm -hmm. and is it real anyway yeah yeah so there's a line in the in the uh, poem where it's like uh we came out the uh the store but we only gave you the change after we came out the store mm -hmm. so like obviously we had money before we came into the store yep but we was like all right let's get everything we need first and then whatever's left mm -hmm. I guess we can give it to you since it's already loose change anyway. Mm -hmm. Oh, and that's when you're talking about giving to yeah. the, the, the homeless man. Right? So it's like, yeah. some ways you think karma is like, all right, if I give a homeless man some money, shit, I'm good for the rest of the day. You like, heard uh, uh, how much a dollar costs? Yes. Yeah. Right. Yes. Major influence. I'm, right. like, I'm like, all right, so if you give somebody some money, how quickly does the karma cash in and how long does it last? And it doesn't even work. So like in the poem, I kind of made it instant. I was like, some people fuck with instant karma. It's like, all right, I like I punched you and I tripped. I'm like, all right, that's my shit. Mm -hmm. All right, so I gave you money and now we're approached by some uh, some unknowns and they're asking questions. But the guy in the car is like, he's saying it in code, but he's saying like, don't fuck with them. They all right. That's why he said I gave you my lighter. Yeah. He's like, we ain't got time for this. They just kids or whatever. Mm -hmm. That's why we understood that uh, he's not tripping over us no more. Yep. So we can go ahead and proceed with our day. That's why I'm so calm and cool. I switched from like, oh shit, I was low key getting pressed. Now I'm like, oh shit, we going to the party. Yeah, yeah. yeah like yeah. it wasn't that bad. Good. Like we met some people at the, at the gas station. Mm -hmm. It was cool. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so that's where the karma get cashed in, yeah. and that's where you you think it, it keeps going, mm -hmm. but it doesn't. It's like your immunity kind of like ends as soon as you know it's quote unquote cashed in. And, and it's interesting, especially when when you got to that point, it felt really tense, you know? Um, just like, hey, can I hold a lighter, you know? And you really, you you don't know who this guy is, but you kind of have an idea of who this guy is, you know? And you don't want to, you just don't want to make anything more tense. You just want to just navigate the situation as, as well as you possibly can. And then, it ends up all right and it's just like all right cool we're good and then by the end of the poem you know it's like things weren't as good at all yeah so you know? so it's like when writing it it was uh it's some things you know from where you come from mm -hmm. that may not be knowledge to everybody but i know at a gas station they give you free matches so i won why you asked me for something so it's like we already know we everybody who knows that we have an understanding that oh this is this is not what i want it to be so let's hurry up and get out of the situation. Mm -hmm. So it's like, and also, I don't know if everyone else did, but we had to read the Odyssey at like ninth yeah. grade or something like that. Yeah. So I was yeah. like, I'm gonna use this information because oh. they force us down anyway. So like, another part of that was like, you gonna pay the ferryman your coins, oh. so when you about to die type yeah, shit. So I was like, all right, you gave him your coins. So I that's why I mentioned the Odyssey a little later. Yeah. And I was like, okay, sirens and the sirens was also a play yeah. on words with like. Holy sirens. So yep. when you meet sirens and you then you meet some women that are sirens, because you know the music real loud or whatever. So it's like the party calls you in with the music and then mm -hmm. you're there and then you kind of stuck there for a little while and then you know you're there for too long but you're supposed to leave. Right. It's like it gets worse the longer right. you're at a party. It's like yeah. you should really leave at the peak of the party. It's That's like all right, it's like, not gonna get any yeah. better. Yeah. It's only gonna get worse. So now you're stuck at somewhere you don't need to be, mm -hmm. and then you know other stuff happens and then someone gets killed and then you're just like yeah. fuck oh, yeah. and then you think at the end of the day what can I have done differently so that's what the end of the poem is about it's like alright if I gave the homeless man more change maybe it would have changed something for that night mm -hmm. so like a nice little play on words ish yeah would you think the, the night would have changed differently if you your karma was different or if homeboy's karma was different I think it's one of those it is what it is situation it's like whether you think this stuff could have happened, it don't change nothing. So I'm like, if I call my granny back, her prayers would have worked. Right. True. If I if I talk to my granny longer, it would been a slightly different timeline, mm -hmm. and then maybe this would have happened, or maybe we got pulled over. Mm -hmm. What's your relationship with Karma right right now? Right now, I fuck with it, but I don't believe in it to the extent that everyone else believes in it. I'm like, I don't really I think it's that. like a trade for a trade. Yeah. But I think fucked up shit happened to people who cool. Yeah. Yeah. It's like it's like if you was at a, a baseball game and a fly ball hit you in the teeth and you lost a tooth, was you like, ooh, <laughs> when I kicked over this can yeah. <laughs> and I didn't pick it up and put it in the trash, was that oh, 
karma. Yeah. That's why I got yeah. fucked up teeth. Yeah, yeah. I don't think so. I don't think so. Because that sounds crazy. Yeah. <laughs> but you go back and you calculate how much good shit you did versus how much bad shit you did, and you like. This makes sense for the time I'm at now, and I'm like, exactly. that's a lot to like that handle. A possible and, calculus. And it's not like, exactly. Not only the thing. time right now, it's like a a period of time. Like the the moment right before that period that starts in your head, mm-hmm. almost is deleted. You know, <laughs> it's just like a, a segment of time that I've been doing things. It's never like, oh, when I was four, I stepped on a beetle. That didn't need. It's always like whatever I did, like in the last two weeks, you know. And it's it's weird when you think about it, you know. And to an extent, it makes I I I feel like you know what you put out into the like universe, you get at least a segment of it back, you know. Yeah. But with a one to one, you know, like I I I don't know. I mean elementary school i threw the ball at that girl's face and now yes (laughs) and then you get in her dms like eight years later she's like fuck you (laughs) and that ball you hit me in the face with (laughs) damn bro exactly and it's like what that's oh that's that, oh, that's karma. That karma oh, makes sense, actually. Is, yeah. I kind of fucked up. I'm not going to lie. You, you did some fucked up shit. That is a balance. But yeah, so to go back to, I guess, your older question about, like, what's my writing process, I think that is, is like, anything I overthink about, mm-hmm. I got to write it down and make it something physical. I'm like, I overly think about karma. And I overly think about uh, rules that I learned that I feel like not everybody has to uh, follow these rules that I learned. Mm-hmm. So I'm like... I need to write this down. So if you don't get none of that, mm-hmm. you still understand the story. And if you get that, then you're like, dang, that's, that makes a lot of sense to me as well. Mm-hmm. So like whatever layer it, the poem hits you, I just hope it hits you at whichever one that it correlates more to you. Whether it's wordplay or like yeah, all the way down deep like to understand like the world through karma and shit. Whether you like bars that don't rhyme <laughs> <laughs> or you just like words that tell stories and like, I want you to fuck with some part of it. <laughs> that makes a lot of sense. Yo, uh, Jay, thank you so much, bro, for coming on to this uh, this episode. Like, I think, dare I say, best episode ever. <laughs> you heard that shit, mom. You heard that stuff, mom. Uh, this is the best. This is sound of flex. Episode ever. I mean, to kill a poet. I mean, we here. Dang, hey. I mean, we here. Um, I mean, hey. this side green and like this side purple. You, I came to match the set. You got yellow <laughs> over there. Like, don't capture me. Like, I didn't. I didn't try hard. Boom, killed it. Um, do you have anything like uh, near future or like the far future or right now that you want to put? Yes, I am working on a book. Mm. Mainly finished. Let him see it. So let's go. Cool. I'm going to change the cover. Same title, though. Less is on repeat. I'm zooming on that. It's going to have Party and Carson in there. It's going to have like some cool little pictures and whatnot. I am an illustrator and whatnot. So. He's an illustrator. Dang. Yeah. Dang. That's See, cool. there, that's there's a something book. in there already. Look. Like I like that. That's like a little note thing. Like, oh, don't forget, cool. stop taking my clothes. Like, that's important for anybody. <laughs> don't take <laughs> other people's clothes. Don't do it. It's important. <laughs> so, if, if you don't take anything from me, don't, don't steal people's clothes. Mm. They're gonna look for it. There you go. <laughs> they're gonna look for it. <laughs> and they're gonna look for you too. Exactly. That's my fortune cookie. Where? <laughs> Don't steal people clothes. Where can people find you, bro? You can find me at that dude J. J. Just the letter J. Instagram, Twitter. On Instagram, Twitter. You probably don't want to follow me on Twitter. I'm, I don't do nothing. I be looking though. I be lurking. I be lurking. <laughs> I'd be like, ha, ha, oh, you don't fuck with me? Oh, you thought I don't be on Twitter. You don't (laughs) fuck with me? I was just with you. This nigga lame as hell. Oh, I'm the lame as hell. (laughs) I didn't know I was the lame as hell. (laughs) Then you start hitting people up. I'm the lame as hell. (laughs) Wait, what you do then, Jay? I don't. (sighs) We had a biscuit. I might have forgot the honey. Now that. Hits too close to home. No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, Fool. Uh, yeah, Jay. Thanks for coming on. Uh, remember to follow uh, Kill the Poet on 
all the social media. Yes, sir. But yes, also sir. on the Patreon, where you can get early access to new episodes, uh, work in progress of upcoming episodes, and so much more. Bro, just look it up. Like exclusive it's gonna be content. exclusive content. Who doesn't want Bro. exclusivity? Bro. And then and then we're gonna when we get merch, like when you get to the highest tier, like you can get early access to that merch no one else is gonna have that you're gonna look crazy you're gonna look so sick hey imagine listening to the podcast while wearing stuff from the podcast <sighs> while thinking about stuff about the podcast uh, God. why not God. love love the podcast love the podcast Preach. and love yourself love yourself yes, at Preach. the end of the day Preach. Preach. bro like Preach. Man, you, know, you guys have a good night, good morning, and a good rest <laughs> no, of your I day. love the random phrase, wake, wake up. up. <laughs> 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 <laughs>